Hi, welcome to the next module. This module is common network devices. Let's look at the four words. Network devices are the basic components of a network. When planning and constructing a network, you need to deploy and configure the network devices to meet the network connections or the network security requirements. So in this module, we will basically talk about what devices are needed for a typical network environment and also the basic configuration um, to kickstart the firewall configurations. So let's look at the objectives. Upon completing this course, we should be able to describe Huawei's common network devices and to be able to describe the function of the network devices and to be able to learn how to log into network devices and to perform the basic configurations. So this module has two uh, contents. First is the basic network devices. So we will talk about the basic, we talk about the concepts of the network devices in a typical uh, network scenario. Then after that, we will talk about the initial device login, the IP addresses, and how to perform some basic configurations. So this is a very typical network security deployment in the campus. So typically in the campus, um, first of all, we have the uh, office LAN. So in this example, we have like two different uh, office LAN environment. Um, so this actually serves as the, uh, uh, the area where all the PCs, the laptop, the IP phones, or maybe the phones or tablet that connects in the office. And after that, we have a scenario, which we have a zone called data center, which this is the one that usually contains the servers, the application servers, the email servers, the file servers, and this is located in this zone environment. And typically in this kind of environment, we do have uh, like a virtual next generation firewall, or maybe we have something called the NIP, which stands for the uh, Network Intrusion Prevention system okay and after that we have uh, core switches and then after that after the core switches we have another firewall which most likely is this is a physical firewall which actually serve as the uh, protector that prevents uh, the, the the traffic from uh, from uh, from the remote uh, uh, hackers and also the remote employees uh, from connecting and to be able to do some controlling uh, of the network traffic and also we typically sometimes we have a component called the NT uh, DDoS uh, components this is actually the uh, component which actually to prevent the uh, denial distributed denial of services which is typically an attack launched by a hacker from over the internet and the main purpose is actually to try to bring down the services which is offered by the company. And also we have a DMZ uh, area. So this is a zone which actually typically will contains the servers which is exposed to the internet. So such as the web server of a company, or maybe for example the webmail, or maybe the email server uh, which is uh, facing the internet. And normally we also have the uh, allow the uh, VPN connection from the branch offices then we perform a site-to-site -site VPN we have a firewall and firewall here to perform a site-to-site -site VPN and also sometimes we also allow the partners to access some of our application server via SSL VPN so first let's talk about switch the most basic components of any network so switch works at a data link layer and forwards data frame so this is the base concept. So in this example, we have a host A, host B, and host C, where they are each connected to different ports, and each carry a different IP address and different MAC address. And uh, a switch basically function as the forwarder to be able to carry the traffic from one uh, uh, from one source, and to be able to forward the packet to another source. Now in the next few slides, we will look at in more details on how switch works. Right, so now let's look at the forwarding switch scenario. So here we have three types of scenario. 
for forwarding. Uh, the first forwarding is what we call the flooding. Now, typically, when the switch receives a frame, which is designated to a broadcast address, for example, in this case, will be FFFF as a destination MAC address. So what happens is the switch, when it receives the frame uh, from this port, and the switch will actually send out to all the active ports in the uh, uh, in the switch. This is what we call the flooding. Now the second scenario for switch to do flooding is when when the switch receives a frame which is actually to a destination MAC address which is a unicast MAC address which is unknown to the switch and therefore what happened to the switch is the switch will actually forward to all the ports which is the active ports. So this is uh, the two scenario for the flooding. Now the next scenario which is the most common scenario which is uh, forwarding which is what we call unicast or uh, one-to-one -one forwarding. So for example, if the ministry receives uh, a frame which actually uh, to a specific destination of a MAC address, so the switch will actually look up for the uh, MAC address table, which we will cover in the next slide on how the switch generates the MAC table. And then therefore the switch will forward only to a certain port which is sending towards the destination of the MAC address. Now there's a third scenario which is what we call discarding. Now discarding is actually whenever the switch receives a packet, a frame, and then the switch will actually discard the packet. So for example, a switch will receive a frame which is tagged in the VLAN, but the VLAN has not been configured at all in the switch. So therefore the switch will drop the packet, or we call it discard. And also the, f f uh, the switch might sometimes uh, receive uh, the frame which is actually tagged in the different uh, VLAN uh, number or we call it sometimes we call it the native VLAN or we call it the PVID port VLAN ID so then therefore the switch might also drop the packet the frame sorry and also probably could be due to the reason of uh, the authentication of the port or maybe some some kind of port security violation uh, on, the, on the policy so therefore the switch might also discard the packet and another scenario where the switch might drop the packet is when the source and the destination MAC address are basically the same of the frame. So therefore the switch will drop the packet. So let's look at how switch generates the MAC address table. So this is example of a MAC address table of a typical switch. Now during the initial state, the MAC address table of the switch is actually empty. So this is the scenario. Again, we use back the same scenario. We have host A here, host B, host C, where each of them have its own individual IP, the MAC address, IP MAC address. This is 10.1.1.3 and this is the MAC address CC. And uh, they are all connected to each individual ports, port 1, port 2, and also G003. Now, the moment the first packet, for example, in this example, the host A, let's assume host A tries to send a, an ARP request to try to look for host C in this example. So now host A will actually carry, uh, first of all, the source MAC address, which is AA in this case, and then also carries the IP address that I'm 10111, I'm trying to look for, let's say, for example, I'm trying to look for 10113. But for destination, because host A doesn't know where is the uh, host C. So therefore, in this uh, address of the destination, it will be a broadcast uh, address. In this example, we use a FFFF. Uh, it's actually the representative of the broadcast address. Now, when this frame enters through the switch through port 0001, then what happens is that the switch will actually start learn that this uh, there's a frame entering from port number 1 and it's actually carrying the MAC address of something something AA. This is how switch learn the MAC address. So switch learn the MAC address through uh, receiving all the frames and to pick up all the source MAC address. Now this information will then be in the switch for 300 seconds by default. Okay, and it will expire after that. All right. So let's assume that um, after switch. Uh, receive the uh, frame and the destination is FFFF 
and then the switch will actually send to all the ports, all the active ports except the incoming ports. It will not send out from here because this is actually where it gets a thread frame from. It will send out to port 3 and port 2. And after that, switch uh, will actually listen to see who is, is actually replying uh, through the uh, ports. Okay, so let's assume that this host C is the one that responding to the uh, request from host A. Now, when host C sent back to the switch, it actually carries the uh, source MAC address and also the destination MAC address. And you can see from this uh, illustration here, source MAC address actually carries CC and the destination MAC address actually carry the value of the AA because A is the one that trying to look for this uh, dot three and therefore once the, the frame enters into the switch A through port number three and therefore the switch actually learns that hey the whole, there's a there's, there's a MAC address CC actually coming from port number three and this is actually how switch A collects the MAC address uh, in the entries. So next we look at the routers. How does a router function uh, in the network uh, environment. Now, first of all, routers, the main function is to forward data packets between networks. Now, when we say networks here, we actually refer to the different kind of uh, subnet IP addresses. So, for example, we have a subnet which is example 192.168.1. something, and maybe we have a subnet which is 10 dot one dot one dot something which is co consider a different type of a network subnets so this is how it works so let's say for example host A tries to look for host B and the application uh, will generate some data and it goes through the transmission layer which this layer actually will uh, it depends on the application is either it will use TCP or the UDP uh, as a transmission a protocol then after that they will go to the next layer which is the IP they will add on to the IP layer and then it will actually um, assign to, uh, from the source IP address to what destination in this case it will be the host B destination IP address then after that they will go through the next layer which is called the data link layer in this layer actually uh, host A will actually tries to con contact uh, what is the uh, the physical MAC address of the of the the, the the gateway, which is a router's A's a MAC address, and after that it will convert into the 0101 binary and then send to router A. So this is the data link layer that connects to router A. So this packet will then send to router A. Now once a router A receives, it will actually analyze the data link layer, which is actually router A say, okay, you are looking for me, this is my MAC address, let me open up your layer 3 and look at what is the uh, mentioned IP address, the destination IP to be more specific, and then router A will then look into its routing table. So routing tables will then forward you to the outgoing interface and towards the destination of this final network. Then after that, the whole process will happen again from router A. It will re-encapsulate the packet and uh, IP address it will modify and but for the network layer, it will be between the MAC address of uh, host A's uh, IP uh, MAC address here and to host B's MAC address here. And then it will just forward to host B, uh, sorry, the router B, and after that router B will encapsulate again, and after that from data link layer, it will, is, it will be between the router B and the router C, and then it will just keep forwarding until it reaches the uh, final destination. Now always remember, routers, it will look at the layer 3, which is they will refer to the routing table entries before they decide which port to exit the packet. This is router. Now another function of a router is what we call the route selection. Now route selection basically means th if the router has multiple paths that could probably uh, the possibility to re to re uh, to be received by one of the destination. Uh, okay, so example router A has two possibilities to reach uh, router D. So it can either choose the router B or router C uh, to reach the 
final destination. So there's a lot of factor could be uh, could determine what the router will choose. Now this one was actually all depends on the routing protocol that we choose. For example, uh, a more common routing protocol we have RIP, routing information protocol, which is decide based on the number of hop counts. The more means is the less preferred. The less hop count means the preferred hop count or the sorry, the preferred path. And also, for example, if it's a RSIS routing uh, routing protocol, or maybe the OSPF routing protocol, it will be actually based on what we call the link state. Now, to keep it simple, link state is basically it will calculate the cost, the value, uh, the total cost from one path from one source to one destination, the total speed uh, and versus this speed before they make a decision. And also, there's another possibility, which is what we call the uh, the manual uh, route policy, which router A can say, if any source coming from this IP range, I want the traffic to send out to only router B. Or maybe any packet which is designated to router D, I want the traffic to send out to this next hop, which is router C. It all depends. So next, we look at the firewall. So we talk about switch, we talk about routers, and now we talk about the firewall. A firewall is mainly used to protect one network area against a network attack and also the intrusion from another network. So in this example, uh, we have, let's like, say for example, the firewall has been implemented um, to the uh, B production area and to prevent uh, the uh, attack uh, the tr from the, uh, the internet uh, against the, uh, the production area. And also sometimes uh, we need firewall uh, in the headquarters. Uh, this is actually acting as the uh, the internet the border protection to uh, to pre prevent the uh, traffic the attack traffic from internet and also to control uh, which of the uh, uh, the 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 office uh, employees uh, has the rights to actually send out any traffic or maybe uh, to control and also maybe to perform some filtering before the traffic has been sent out. And also uh, we can um, uh, filter the firewall, uh, using the firewall to do some filtering uh, for those attack, uh, the, uh, uh, the DDoS attack, uh, maybe it's the uh, Trojan horse attack, and uh, before the traffic entering to the data center, because data center typically is the one that hosts all the important web servers, uh, maybe the um, uh, maybe the uh, email servers, the web, the application server, which is facing the uh, internet. And also we have branches. The main function of the firewall at the branch is actually for branch interconnect so that the traffic from here can actually go back to the office and vice versa so that the, the office, uh, the employees of the branches can access the application server on the headquarters site. So let's compare between these three basic components, uh, the network uh, devices of the company. So for example, switches. So normally uh, switches is to aggregate and also building a basic layer 2 and a layer 3. And also the main function for switch is perform fast forwarding of a packet. That's the main job, okay, to, to transfer the traffic, the frame as fast as possible. And, and also switches do have some limit uh, limitation on controlling the traffic. So, but for firewall, the main function of the firewall is to control the packet uh, to permit or deny any traffic uh, which is meant to be connecting to internet or maybe any traffic which is meant to receive from the internet and also to perform a filtering uh, to prevent the uh, anti-trojan horses and also the viruses from entering the company's network. So the router on the other side, uh, it mainly the, the main function is perform addressing and also the folding and ensure network interconnection between uh, different uh, companies to different companies or maybe uh, different countries to different countries, different region to different region and everything is by performing a routing. And again, a, r a job for the router is bas basically to forward uh, the traffic as fast as possible and to make sure that the internal connectivity between uh, one network to another network, which is uh, possible. 
Let's look at the firewall development history. In the 1989, the first type of firewall which is developed uh, in the industry is just, which is called the packet filtering firewall. Now the main function of the packet filtering firewall which is actually meant to be performing uh, some filtering of the IP packets. Now however, uh, one of the main uh, the problem of the, uh, the packet filtering is that it's able to do the uh, packet filter from one source IP to destination IP address but the problem is that the, the, the packet sometimes uh, the hacker may be able to use to fake uh, the source IP address and try to penetrate back uh, the packet into the system. Okay, So this is the reason why packet filtering firewall is actually a very low level firewall. We specify the source destination uh, IP address and it doesn't do any uh, checking on the session. And after that, during the somewhere between the 89 and also in 1994 uh, we have the proxy uh, technology which is developed and the proxy uh, firewall which is actually uh, well, sometimes we call it the application agent which actually the uh, application for example Internet Explorer which actually needs to talk to the proxy uh, firewall which actually requests for the web pages and the proxy firewall will then go to the internet, download the pages and after that maybe perform some filtering or scanning before pass the page back to the, the, the Internet Explorer. So this is what we call the proxy technology. Uh, but the, the bad news about the proxy technology is that there are very few applications are developed that can understand the, uh, the proxy uh, protocol. So, so next we have in uh, 1994 uh, during this uh, uh, this era, uh, we have a type of firewall which de develop based on the status check, and sometimes we call this a session the mechanism. Now the session mechanism works as in, if let's say for example if the traffic coming from the LAN that goes to internet to a certain uh, web server, and if the packet so once the packet goes out, we call it the uh, for, for example we call it the request packet to the web server and when the web server comes back uh, we call it the return traffic so let's say the, uh, the the firewall will check against the session table and if this session happened before which is a request and there is a response there's a reply to, to uh, uh, the firewall will actually will let the packet pass through back to the uh, the client or maybe for example a ping request when the, the destination respond back to the source and then uh, the firewall will check the session. If this is the uh, traffic which actually sent out before, therefore it will accept the incoming back uh, traffic. This is called the session mechanism. And after that, in the 1995, okay, we have a dedica dedicated devices for all the functionality uh, apart of just a firewall. So, for example, uh, we have something called the uh, web filtering uh, devices which is meant to be a filter. Uh, for example, we have a VPN appliances, which is meant to do a VPN a virtual private network and uh, as a part of the uh, firewall. So after that, in the somewhere in the 2004, uh, the industry came up with a very unique uh, concept called the UTM, which is what we call unified threat management. So the, fun, the, 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 the term unified threat management is basically is to integrate all the functionality into a single appliance. Okay? Uh, rather than having multiple appliances to serve the firewall function, and now we have a single appliance that perform all the functionality. So such as the uh, VPN functionality, uh, web filter functionality, mail filter functionality, uh, maybe uh, a little bit kind of uh, the IPS intrusion detection or intrusion prevention, um, kind of, and of course uh, the the routing, the NAT network address translation, and also the packet filtering, um, all these things into one device UTM. Okay, and somewhere in the 2005. Uh, the technology actually evolved into uh, a lot of uh, application actually runs on top of the same technology for example HTTP so if there's too many HTTP traffic running and for example we have Facebook traffic we have uh, maybe some of the chatting software 
it also uses the same HTTP traffic that perform the chatting uh, or maybe some uh, downloading and therefore we need some kind of technology called the deep packet inspection technology which actually investigate the packet that actually pass through and then to, to determine what kind of application is this and and, and of course look look at the policy if the policy allows it to pass through and therefore the packet will able to pass through even though it's, it's actually run on the same HTTP uh, protocol example and after that we have the uh, next generation of firewall which is somewhere in the 2009 um, this is uh, the next generation which actually uh, the firewall that can actually control based on the user and also the application type plus the content that the user try to serve, try to use, try to perform and uh, therefore based on the user, based on the the time or maybe, maybe based on the different type of a uh, device that you access for example if the user access from Wi-Fi the user cannot do this and cannot do that or maybe when the user connects via LAN by a physical cable, the user can do this or do that. Or maybe when the user uh, connecting the uh, the company uh, from house, from home, via VPN, the user cannot surf internet, cannot do this and cannot do that. So this is actually based on user uh, application and also based on the condition uh, that that the firewall will set the policy according to that. So let's look at uh, some of the basic concept of a firewall. Uh, so the first we we'll talk about the security zone, all right. And in short, we call it zone, or we call it security zone or zones. Now this is actually a local logical security zone, and uh, a network that connected to one or more interfaces, which is acceptable. So typically, as a firewall, we will first have to de determine how many zones that we need to define, and after we define the zones, we also need to to specify the uh, security level of the zone and after that finally the third step is to to select which of the firewall interface that interface or interfaces because here it says one or more interfaces that to be added to the zone now for example uh, this is the default uh, firewall zone uh, from uh, for Huawei so first we have the uh, DMZ zone and typically this DMZ zone is the zone that we actually define the interface which is facing towards all the web servers which all the servers which are actually facing the uh, internet right and also we have a trust zone and usually trust zone is the zone that's connected to our LAN our local area network of a company and after that we have the untrust zone this is the zone which actually facing the internet uh, which is the, this interface which is normally connect to our internet router that or maybe the internet the modem that connects to the internet so these are the, the three typical zones and one of the zone which is not mentioned here is actually what we call the local zone now local zone actually refers to the firewall itself okay sometimes there are traffic which is uh, meant to be controlled that connecting into the firewall itself or maybe from the firewall itself the traffic tries to go out to another zone so therefore we need to configure a uh, zone or we call the zone policy so please bear in mind um, so a zone is actually meant to ease our configuration and whenever we set the uh, file uh, the security the policy and also uh, for example, if today our company only have uh, one physical LAN or maybe one subnet of the LAN and maybe tomorrow we want to expand to another additional LAN, maybe we have another subnet that we need to add two or more interface into the same uh, trust zone. This is actually possible. And therefore, once, once we added the interface into the zone, we do not need to reconfigure uh, the security policy once again. So the relationship between the firewall security zone and the interfaces. Okay, so as we mentioned earlier, uh, a security zone consists of security level uh, value and also the interface that needs to be added to the zone. And we also have uh, something called the physical, uh, sorry, the default zone, which is the four zones that we mentioned. And also we can also define our own. Uh, we call it the user defined zones. So for example, you can call a zone sales zone, uh, you can put a value there, you can call it, uh, let's say, uh, R&D zones and whatever zones they want to call it. 
Alright, so here are some of the questions that we need to consider when defining a zone. First question is that, does the firewall have two security zones with the same security level? Now, typically a level which is ranged from 1 to uh, 100. Um, so the, the higher the value it goes, the security level, the, uh, the more trusted the zone is. Okay, so for example, typically as a, as a trusted zone, uh, you have, it will have a value of uh, 85. And the untrust zone will have a security value of 5. And uh, DMZ zone will have a security level of 50. Just to give you an, uh, a simple idea. Now the question is that, can we have two security zones to have the same uh, security level? Answer is no. Okay, we cannot have a two security zone to share the same security uh, level value. So for example, we cannot create another zone, let's say call it a sales zone, and then we assign with a security value of 50. This is not possible. Now you either configure 51 or you configure 49, or you can configure any value which is not mentioned here. And one of the values that I, I, I have not mentioned, which is a local, it, it's actually having a value of a 100. Now let's go to the next question. Does the firewall allow the same physical interface to belong to two different security zones? Okay, now the earlier question is asking two security zones with the same level. Answer is no. So the question next is that the same physical interface belongs to two security zones. Answer is again no. Okay. Now one interface can only belong to one security zone at one time. Okay. So it's either the interface belongs to this zone or it belongs to another zone. Okay, it's either one. And the interface can also be a logical interface such as a sub interface which is something something dot g for example g001.10 or maybe another interface which is dot 150 example. This is what we call the sub interface which is permitted that you can have different uh, sub-interface belongs to multiple uh, zone or maybe it could be VLAN interface uh, so no, no, maybe they are sharing the same physical interface but they have a different VLAN um, value so v, uh, we call it the interface VLAN and there is actually considered a different uh, physical interface so the next question is that um, can different interface on the firewall belongs to the same security zone okay now the answer here is yes the first two answer are no but the first the last question is actually yes can different interface belongs to the same security zone now as i was mentioning in the previous slide so this is example where we have another one interface which is g100 uh, we assign to the trust zone and we could probably have another uh, interface g001 which probably belongs to another different IP subnet and then we can actually put them into the same zone as call it a trust. So answer is yes, this is possible. And I also mentioned in the previous slide that this is actually a very highly recommended uh, way to configure it because it will actually ease uh, the configuration job of an administrator. 